And Liam Rossinia is out of Hull City. The championship finished on Saturday. We had a long weekend and a bank holiday. Straight back into the office today on Tuesday for Mr. Ilicali and the Hull higher-ups. And Rossinia is out. You can see there um, it was bubbling today, wasn't it? I think TalkSport got it in the morning um, that this was going to be done and announced there. You can see the tweet at... 3.39 p.m. Obviously, this still counts, I think, as a 23-24 sacking. Not the first of the 24-25 season. But certainly, you look at the timing. We see this from clubs, don't we? One season finishes. They've set their standard. They've made their call. And Hull are going to be going into 24-25 with a new manager. Um... I put a tweet out asking people for their thoughts on this. Look, as you can imagine, um, football supporters are fairly binary when it comes to managerial sackings. Uh, either they're outraged and the poor manager is incredibly hard done to, or the complete opposite. You know, they're, they're a fraud. Get them out. Um, as you can imagine, in this instance, a lot of people rather outraged on Liam Rossini's behalf. Um, I guess... The reason why uh, would be that. You can see your championship table there. Hull City in seventh position. Uh, they were 17th, I think, last season. I mean, interestingly enough, we'll link this video at the end of this. I did my managerial rankings. Um, I won't tell you where I put Liam Rossini, but what I did say is, ah, oh, maybe this is quite a good matchup, him and Mr. Illichali, because maybe he just calms his owner down, who we know can uh, be prone to rushes of blood when it comes to the transfer market and indeed the hiring and firing of managers. We saw, uh, who was it? Grant McCann was there and then Shota Avaladze came and went, uh, which facilitated Liam Rossini's way in at Hull. This is his first full season and uh, we'll have this debate in a minute as to where Hull should expect to finish because they have been quite well backed and I think that's going to be the key um, look this is subjective as to whether you agree or disagree with the decision but what it seems to completely boil down to is given Hull's spend stature size trend position in the championship hierarchy is seventh place there a good finish We'll leave that one down in the comments. I mean, I suppose if you look at the teams, the two teams Hull are directly above there, Middlesbrough and Coventry, well, they were both in the playoffs last season. And I suspect at the start of the season, if you'd said, ah, Hull, they're going to finish above Middlesbrough and Coventry next season, you probably would have said tick in the box. And then look at the teams above Hull, Norwich, year two parachute payment, OK, West Brom, you can make the argument Hull probably have more competitive finances there. West Brom have a very good manager. And then look, Southampton, year one parachute. Leeds, year one parachute. Yeah, Ipswich is, a, is an outlier. Everyone will think they should have finished above Ipswich this season. But only Leicester actually managed to do it. So what I'm saying is when you look at that, if he has underperformed, it can only be by one place, can't it? Because I, I suspect playoffs and you're not going to be sacking your manager on the Monday morning of the uh, week of the playoffs. So it's a very interesting debate. You can also throw into um, the conversation that this has been an incredibly high standard championship where that top four was away and clear. You can see the 12 point gap between West Brom and Southampton. If you class it as the top four and the rest, well, Hull are kind of third out of the rest, aren't they? And um, I guess the noose around Liam Rossini's neck will be the recruitment. And I think Hull's recruitment was very good and very competitive. Yeah, put the year one parachute teams in, in their own box when you're signing. I mean, in the end, I think they all signed a striker for nearly eight, 10 million um, in the pre-season, didn't they? Leeds took Piro and Leicester took Cannon and uh, Southampton took Stewart and none of those players were even in their um, club's sides by the end of the season. So they're a different world. Ignore them. But really, 
other than Coventry, who'd raised the money from um, Jokeres and Hamer being sold, you would probably reasonably argue that in terms of an owner really pushing the boat out, Hull was the one. And look, Philogene, that was big money. Those um, They're the permanents up the top there. Amur um, was a couple of million, wasn't it? Panda, the keeper as well. Connolly, um, don't suppose the Middlesbrough fans when he was on loan there would say he's a proven goal scorer, but he started the season um, pretty well, didn't he? Am I right in saying that? I, was, oh, I can't remember. A um, lot going on in my brain from this season. But then look at the loanees down the bottom as well. Carvalho, Zaruri, uh, Delap, Giles, even Twine in the first half of the season. You'd think, you know, these are kind of high ticket, high price loanees. Loanees that are not bought into a club to, you know, oh, can you get us into mid table? <laughs> you don't take um, Carvalho and Zaruri, who have literally both won the championship in the last couple of years, stick them in your team to finish mid-table. So it is going to be the source of our debate today on Liam Rossinia. We're literally, I think, unless they've got somebody completely lined up who's going to come in, you know, at 10 o'clock tonight. Um, uh, we don't quite know about that now. Unless that's the case, really the conversation seems to um, sort of live and die on... What are the expectations for Hull? And did Liam Rossini make them? And I think we can be fairly plain. Whatever your expectations for Hull, it would appear that Mr. Illa Charlie's were above seventh place because if he was happy with seventh place, maybe Liam Rossini wouldn't have been sacked. There is also the conversation of judging things over more than one season. How about that? That um, if your goal is to be in the playoffs... Maybe that takes a, a couple of seasons. I don't know. But maybe they've decided this is the way they want to do it. And I don't know the FFP position. Maybe they've had a big gamble on playoffs this season. It's the wrong year to be gambling this one in the championship with 90 points not even getting you in the top two, has to be said. But if that's the case, they've had a big gamble and it hasn't paid off, then, hey, it's the gift of any owner of any football club to pull the trigger if they won. It wasn't so long ago, you may remember. And I must admit, thinking, hmm, um, that's an interesting nomination. Liam Rossini actually got nominated for Championship Manager of the Season. And a few people have been throwing that in. Personally, regardless of this sacking, I didn't think he was in the conversation for Manager of the Season. And again, I will link my video of ranking of the managers. You can see who my top three were, Liam Rossini wasn't in that number. But hey, he's been recognised by the wider football world and the uh, people, probably the people at Sky to be honest, if it's um, Championship Awards, um, had picked him out. So my take, it feels a bit harsh. It does feel a bit harsh. If Liam Rossini has been told, I need playoffs, I'm bringing you these players in August and these players in January. And if you don't make the playoffs, we're going to try something else. Then I suppose it's fair enough. I'm not entirely sure that would have been what he signed up for in the first place. I do think Hull are trending in the right direction. Um, could they get in the playoffs next season? Yeah, quite probably. They've got 70 points this season. In that instance, uh, Rossini would be... I know he worked with Rooney at Derby, but, you know, in his second second season as a full-time... or second full season as a full-time championship boss, you know, the experience is building up from those couple of years as well, back with Derby. And I think he's, don't think he's 40 yet, um, Rossini. So you then have a manager who's that brilliant combination of both young and experienced and also has the credibility of being a ex-player at a decent standard as well. So, yeah, they could have hung in there and seen what transpired next season. And I suspect if this decision were made, say Hull were not in the playoff spots, coming in to the January transfer window of, you know, January 2025, then maybe people would be a bit more sympathetic with Mr. Illichali's position here of sacking... 
Liam Rossini that, okay, they've had a good tilt at it. They're having another go. Doesn't look like they're going to make it again this year or right now, if you stop the clocks, they're not going to make it. But this does feel a bit, a bit binary, doesn't it? We're judging it on one season. Did you get in the playoffs or didn't you? No, you didn't. Out you go. So that does feel, I don't know if that's the right way to, um, to run things. But then again, uh, Mr. Illa Charlie's a lot more successful than me. And I will quite happily sit here if Hull are banging in the points next season and they're, I don't know, 80 to 90 points and they're either in a top two challenge or in a playoff challenge. And maybe we can say oh, this was the right decision uh, because they didn't get in the playoffs with a senior. Um, and now they have got in the playoffs or, or even better next season. <laughs> The irony of all that is we don't know if Liam Rossini would have done exactly that next season. So I think I'm falling on the side of um, I'm not sure I would have I would have done this. Like the way Hull play can be a bit overly methodical. I think you could say the same thing about Rossini and Rooney's uh, derby. It was a bit textbooky, a bit one paced at times, but when it worked, it was really really good. And um, I'm sure we all have fresh in that in our minds that sky game in would have been round 45 wouldn't it against Ipswich the 3-3 draw where you know it's thrilling and Hull were Hull were great weren't they a big part of um of that game so yeah look we're completely subjective on this so um I respect anybody's opinion whether they think this is the right call or the wrong call we 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 don't know what the what the future would have been now, he's he's gone. So um, I think what I'm saying is I respect your right to have, you know, either of you agree or disagree in the comments. So try your best to respect mine and others' rights to hold uh, what view we have. But with that being said, I would love to get your views in the comments on Liam Rossini, Manager of the Year nominated, uh, Championship Manager, seventh place, 70 points, just missed out on the playoffs. He is sacked immediately after the season finishes. Let me know your take on the decision in the comments. Let me know what you think Mr. Ilichali might have up his sleeve in terms of a replacement. And let me know who you think might be a good replacement. Uh, I plugged it a few times. Um, yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah, God. Um, I'm losing track of my days with bank holiday weekend. Uh, click up here because yesterday I ranked all 24 championship managers that ended the season on their work in this season and um, well see if you think whether my take and where I put Rossini in my rankings would line up with him being sacked a day later literally the first day back in the office after the season's finished <laughs>